Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of advanced strategies. This time we're going to be looking at controlling round length and what does it mean to control round, round length? Well, obviously it means, you know, um, making the rounds, round two or round three, at a certain length that benefits you. And there are a couple of different ways to do this. Sometimes you would like a shorter round two, sometimes you want a longer round two, sometimes you want a longer round three, or you want a shorter round three, and so on and so forth. And while this concept does appear obvious, um, a lot of this comes down to knowing your matchups. And while I can't tell you exactly what matchup every matchup you want, if you want a shorter round two or longer round two, it is important to be aware of this. And you know, if you lose a matchup or whatnot, you can one of the things you can think about to try and prove the matchup in future is to you know control certain round lengths, um, which you'll see examples of in this video of you know trying to make round two shorter so that your opponent can't get as an effective bleed, or maybe you want round two to be longer so that you can defend bleeds um, better or maybe you want round three longer and whatnot. So we'll get into a few examples with Payable, who is going to be helping make this video. So big shout out to Payable for once again, helping me set up these scenarios and make these videos. Um, go drop him a follow and check out his stream. Um, he does stream quite regularly and he's also um, arguably one of the best Gwen players. So go check him out and let's get into the gameplay and see how we do. So for the video topic today, to being controlling round length, we are going to be having a game here where, um, <clears throat> in this example, Payable is going to be playing it. He's been instructed to play it in the incorrect manner um, on purpose for the per for this video, and that being where, in this matchup, if you're going to lose round one, you want to do it early as the North Guard player because you want a longer round two. But for the purpose of this video, um, Payable is going to um, play this round quite deeply, nice and that is going to. One potentially make it much more difficult to beat because this deck as we all know is very very threatening in in those short rounds a lot of burst potential so you quite often need those longer rounds to um actually defend a bleed efficiently against so um let us play out this round one and see how all things go um i guess i'm going to perhaps just ping that down and then i'm just gonna get this down for now and probably gonna end up playing erlen soon and then we'll see what happens next. So, Tony Joust coming out, killing that. That's actually kind of annoying for me, but sure. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and play a second one of these then for now. And then we're going to probably play the Erlen next. So, we have Raiden. He's going to be copying one of these. That is going to be kind of annoying. Let's try kill this for now. Um, get that early down and get that carryover achieved. So Brayden's being committed here. Opponent is looking like they are actually trying to um, be aggressive. See a coup de grass coming out here onto the um, Griffin Witcher. So opponent's been quite aggressive here with this round one. Um, I guess then I'm probably going to end up playing the boiling oil to kill that. Off. Um, I don't want the opponent to have two of those. And then I am possibly going to play Quen next for a Vesemir. Um, or even a... S we'll see. Um, so Dutch for another one of these is going to get copied, it seems. Okay, Spanet is being quite aggressive here. I think then it is probably going to be for the best that I play Assault onto... Um, possibly this. I want to get rid of this. It's not going to do much anymore for me. Don't ever expect your opponents to line up. Get rid of you. And then I'm probably going to play Quinn onto Vesemir, I think, at this point. So the thing is, the opponent's not going to be able to win round one if they can't deal this Griffin Witcher anyway. If you can't deal Griffin Witcher, winning round one becomes pretty much impossible. We'll see another remedy from the opponent. Okay. Um, so ping you. And now we are going to get the... Vesemir carry over done um and with this going to be triggering every single turn it's pretty much impossible for the opponent to contest this round any deeper like this is quite a few points um opponent does seem to be trying to contest at least for now um purifies the griffin witcher which obviously will stop it from getting that value but at the same time um we can win this round we will be really happy so i'm gonna go ahead and play this for now and then maybe play the next siteman after that so this will finally actually stop locking itself 
opponents still keeping keep going here plays a uh, life which are mental all right um i guess then i may just end up playing the Keldar might get invert though hmm i guess i'm gonna have to play at this point i mean if i win round one it's pretty okay if i win round one considering how much how deep this round one has gone it's pretty good for me um we'll play that then maybe even play the scythe next we'll see what the opponent decides to do um Okay, opponent finally deciding to pass here. So, we win round one, but round two is very short, which is good news for us. Because that means our bleed becomes so much more threatening because we can just slam some points. And it might be difficult for the opponent to actually defend a bleed in just shorter round two. Um, especially against this deck. So, I'm pretty happy with how short round two is. Now, let's see what we end up drawing into. Um, selective mutations a little bit on the slow side unless this survives and it's actually not too bad but the question is will this survive it might survive actually i guess i can put in a hmm. <laughs> let's see i guess i'm gonna mulligan away you for now i'm mulligan you Okay, so I guess I'll play this, then I will play Select the Mutation on that. Put maybe a Witcher True in hand and actually go for a potential 2-0, depending on how the opponent plays here. Not the most threatening hand, the wall is hoping it will be a little bit more threatening. You see Joaquim coming out here onto a Nausicaa Sergeant. Um, and we see... Our opponent's actually going to have a very awkward leader ability, so we see the opponent going leader ability here and... That is not the ideal leader ability to be getting. Four point leader ability. Not amazing, but uh, one thing that's nice about our hand, I guess, is it gives our opponent very little options in their prey. Our uh, opponent has to play leader ability early because if they don't play leader ability early, they might just get 2 0 So you can see the opponent is respecting the possibility of a 2 0 And turning Jaffa's played, so I don't think there's a possibility of seeing a second one. Um, we could end up going assault for that big siphon potentially. Uh, we'll have to see. We see Kudugras coming out here onto a, another. Um, Joaquim, and that is going to be grabbing Hunting Pack. Hunting Pack actually not being too bad here. Ooh, that's actually a brick Hunting Pack. So we know one of the cards in our opponent's hand is a Hunting Pack. I'm going to go ahead and play this. And I think I'm actually going to go for the two. I'm going to play this now. And sure. then I think I'm going to go for... Um... Oh, that's actually probably safe. I can just leave it like this. And then next time I can decide if I want to go leader ability or not. So we'll do that. And then what's this play going to be opponent's going to play counter into that i guess potentially but much end up being a two no one card's dead hunting pack at hand no um but yeah i don't think i really care this is going to be so many points here i'm just going to go ahead play this do that play assault onto the big scytheman could actually have gone locked there instead but i think i want to go for this and um Yep, let's see how the opponent's planning on making up these points. A lot of point gap, especially the four point card in hand. Doesn't look like he has the points. And the thing is, it's just a short round. It's very difficult to actually defend a bleed. Even if it wasn't for this brick card, it's just much, much more difficult to defend bleed. So, in a longer round, um, the opponent would have had a lot more options, a lot more ways to start building up their, um, their, their ability to defend the bleed, so to speak. And in a short round, it's just quite difficult against a deck that has so much explosive points, such as this. Okay, so same thing again. This time around, um, this time around, we're going to see a little bit of a different approach where uh, maybe the opponent's going to respect the um, ability of Northern Realms to push um, in a short round too. So let's do some mulligans. Probably don't need you for now. Probably don't need you. And I guess we don't need two Scythemen either. So um, Guess we'll probably end up starting with this, and then I might end up playing the Selective Mutation to shuffle back and Eskel into the deck, and possibly perhaps play something like the Quen. Um, well, get Quen in hand rather. So uh, let's probably do something like that. I don't want to have this Witcher Trio in hand because I obviously want to end up. Um, I want to end up getting a booster with the Keldar, so let's put the deck, and then we can play, not Keldar, sorry, Erland, rather play the Erland here, boost up all of that, and let's see how that all goes, so we see Emissary, sure, I'm gonna go ahead and play this for now, and get the carry of established, which is nice, um, 
And we see poison coming out on Erland. Sure, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and play this for now. And then I am possibly going to end up playing something like Griffin Witcher next, perhaps. Um, or maybe even, okay, so I'll probably take the early pass here. And the reason for those early pass is because in a longer round two, it's much, it's much is more easily able to defend a bleed due to the fact they have more time to develop engines um and it is i don't have time to develop all my carryover just yet so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the opponent to defend this bleed right now i'm going to mulligan away the eskal for now i don't think i want to go all in just yet i think find another witch and mulligan that too um so we'll start off perhaps with this and then maybe end up playing assault onto a griffin witcher at it perhaps so we see down comes a nausea sergeant am i going to answer that right now i think i want to boost this ah but if i boost up i could play into poison um but if i don't boost up i could play into tony just um i think i'm gonna boost up it is it is a bit vulnerable to tony just if i don't so i'm gonna get a boost up a little bit a little bit vulnerable against poison but i guess i'm gonna play into poison at some point anyway we see another nausea sergeant coming out here I think I'm gonna go ahead and play assault onto this for now, and then I am possibly going to end up playing boiling oil next, perhaps. So, opponent's gonna play Braithens here, copy the Griffin Witcher. Yep, is indeed the case, and I am gonna go ahead and kill this off. We transform you. I expect this one might get Tony Jousted. Um, see Joaquim coming out here, grabbing a poison. Mm, that could be kind of spooky. And now things are starting to look quite difficult for me to actually defend this bleed properly. So I guess I'm going to end up playing this and possibly get this out of my hand before my opponent can end up getting this at the leader ability. So we'll do that just before they can end up yoinking that with, my, with their leader ability. Don't want that in hand. Um, this is quite a hefty poison. I'm not sure if there's a cup bear in hand or not, but we'll see. We do see down comes the Vigo. Vigo gonna be grabbing a poison. Okay, so no cup bear in hand, but that's still pretty good value. And now we've got a lot of assimilate value on the engine on the board too. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play the Margarita. And as you can see, it's a lot harder for me to bleed, bleed right now. Um, the opponent does seem to have a much easier time defending this bleed in a longer round. As I have to decide now whether I'm just going to go card down or what. Um, we haven't even seen the coup de grace yet. Coup de grace could come out on this any second now. Which would be quite a lot of points. Um, haven't seen Masquerade Ball yet. Can't obviously pass just yet because there's still so much value left. Here comes... Menno onto Remedy. Possibly going to be grabbing another one of these, yeah. Um, I guess we're just going to go Quen onto Bezimir, get some more carryover at this point. I'm probably just going to end up playing for carryover. See Leader Blitz coming out here from the opponent, so I guess we're just going to play for carryover. There's not really too much more to be done this round other than play for carryover. We're not going to be getting our card back, probably. Um, do I need to transform you? I don't think yet. I'm going to play Scyther next, so I obviously want to keep this boost so I can transform it next turn. Not a huge deal. Um, probably just going to play out. I, mean, I want to shorten around as much as possible. I'm not going to be able to keep my card here. So I may as well try shorten around. See the Unsays coming out I'm onto deal there. And yeah, this thing. point gap is looking quite absurd. Um, may as well just shorten around a little bit to play this card out. Probably going to keep the Leo for round three. And going into round three... Our opponent did use the ability, but we are going to have to go up against Masquerade Ball in the short round. Looking kind of spooky. Um, Focus on it. Move, yeah, so let's pass here. Room. And now we're a card down and we're going to go into a short round or shortish round two, three. Short round three is still good for us, but again, opponent still has Usurper, still has Masquerade Ball. They don't have a leader ability. We have a leader ability, which is nice, but again, this is looking quite spooky. Um, which tree obviously very good. Um, could try mulligan once here. Yeah. I think one mulligan is okay. Sure. 
I can't start off with early Keldar because it gives our opponent a very good invocation, which they could end up shuffling back the Joaquim and then cantarelling into Joaquim for our Keldar, so that's a little bit dangerous. Um, so I might actually just not end up taking I think I'm just going to start off with Witcher Tree, honestly. Um, if I go Keldar, it's very vulnerable to invocation. Um, so we're just going to start with this, and this Masked Grey Ball is going to play for a lot of points, assuming our opponent has enough Aristocrats, which they should have if they have Roderick or Usurper or Cancer Elf or Kim. He has Usurper, that's a lot of points. And down comes the Poison. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and play possibly this now. And that is going to give me the Keldar, which is nice. I guess I keep the Keldar at this point. Probably send back the Scytheman. I'm um, going to go ahead and just take the boosts. Do I take them now? Um, I guess I take them now. Get the Scythian value, sure. And then maybe play Keldar next turn. And then Leo. Invocation. Looking kind of spooky. Here comes Joachim um, from Cantarella, it seems. So at least they can't, at this point, invert this and... Uh, at least they can't invert this and then um, get it with Joaquim, but point gap looking a little bit dicey. Here comes the Keldar. It's a, little, it's a nice Keldar that got boost, getting boosted by this was quite lucky from us, but I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. Last two cards are Coup de Grasse, which is a lot of points, and then possibly still invo. Um, that Joaquim is going to be grabbing out Cupbearer. A lot of assimilate value here too. And yeah, that's a pretty big point gap. Very, very big point gap. So I don't think this is going to be enough. Um, yeah, not even enough. This point doesn't mean to play the last card. And I mean, that's what happens. In a longer round two, it is a lot harder to bleed. Um, obviously, sometimes you get... I mean, as the NR player, you don't really have a choice in the matter. But as you can see, as a North guard player, you do have a choice. And if you're going to push round one deep, you're going to make sure you got to win round one. Because if you push round one and then you actually end up losing round one... You go into a short round two, it's a lot easier for the Northern Realms player to bleed um, round two in those situations. Alright, so we see here Skelliger versus um, Syndicate. Now, this is a situation where we would like to shorten round two, actually. We would like to, we're probably going to always lose round one, but in this situation, um, I think it would be better if we were able to shorten round two so that Syndicate doesn't get as much um, value as they otherwise. Um, but for this example, though, we're going to do it incorrectly. We're going to pass early on and see what happens. Let's just say um, we're seeing here, we're looking at our hand going, eh, there really isn't much to do here. We're going to pass early, going to give a longer round to Syndicate, and things are going to be a bit dicey in a long round against Syndicate. So for the first game, as always, we're going to play it incorrectly. The second game, we are going to be, um, we're going to be a lot more aggressive um, in the round one. So I guess we're going to end up playing something like the... Boat. Uh, yeah, I guess you could just end up playing the boat. And opponent is playing so skewered too. That might just be them either missing out on justice or trying to preserve justice for round two. Not too sure. This hand of mine is actually very awkward. So I guess losing round one is going to make at least some amount of sense. Consider all things considered. Um. So I guess dip in the pond. Opponent is going to be somewhat uninteractive. Um. Actually, kind of annoying. Um. I don't really want to ping that, but this is going to die anyway. If I don't, I guess I may as well use the ping. Um, otherwise, this is just going to die. So I'll do that. And then, um, yeah, that's getting quite tall. I guess we're going to here, go ahead and play the Greatsword. Greatsword probably going to die to payday, but I need the Greatsword in the graveyard anyway for Hjalmar later on. So um, I guess we just play that. And see a Sea Jackal coming out. Um, just take the whole finger. So then we might just end up. Um, eh, we could also say not to give a point more carry. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens in a longer round um, too. Just for the example of this video, we're gonna pass here early, go into longer round two, and see what ends up happening. And then the next game after that, we're gonna go into shorter round two and see how much it improves the situation by. So, um. Pass here, early pass, not good to take this early pass against Syndicate usually. Um, if you have the option to not avoid it, obviously. Um, so we're going to mulligan away you. Um, probably don't want the gutting slash either. And Totem's nice. Um, we're going to need to try to get Blood Eagle for <laughs> Yelmar, which is going to be difficult. Opponent starts with a cleave, I don't know how I'm going to actually get that 
um blood eagle value could be a bit awkward so let's see how we do here um but yeah gonna have to defend this bleed it is gonna be difficult to defend a bleed because syndicate has a lot of points potentially in the long run like this so we'll see what we can do safe crack are gonna start the um bleed off i guess i'm gonna go ahead then and play raiding fleet on that um gonna start being it for now trying to get this down as much as possible to try some bloody go for cleaver which looks like cleaver is going to come down probably now oh uh, that's going to be furco for justice then i guess okay so justice coming down first and that's going to be pulling out a second safe cracker it's already looking quite spooky for me um let's get this down and then start pinging away at that safe cracker see if we can eventually kill it um at least we do have a death blow on the furco if the opponent doesn't play around well we'll see what they play around here comes probably cleaver and yeah this cleaver is going to be a lot of points so here comes the cleaver and opponent boosting up the um Foco actually quite annoyingly here stopping the blood eagle um it's kind of annoying so i guess we'll go ahead then and possibly play a ping here and then we might end up going Need the death blow, so what is it? I don't exactly want to be boosting up. I don't want to kill this because I really want the death blow next turn so I can get Hjalmar to kill that. Um, very difficult to kill this cleave actually without the Hjalmar, so we're gonna have to try and get that death blow next turn. The problem is killing the um killing the drill is gonna be another very big problem. And here comes the drill already, so I'm already under quite a lot of pressure here. Um whew, this drill's gonna be quite threatening. So, what can we exactly do about all of this? I guess we're going to have to kill the drill first and foremost. I don't really think I have... I don't think I'm allowed to let that survive. Letting it survive is just too scary. So, we'll go ahead and kill that. And then I'm going to end up taking the Hjalmar here. And it's already looking very difficult to defend this bleed properly. So, we'll go ahead and... Yeah, it's looking quite dicey. Um... Yeah, I have to kill this drill. The drill is just too many points to let survive, so we'll have to kill the drill for now. And I mean, yeah, this is this is a lot of points to gonna have to kill it soon. I think I'm actually just gonna have to do this now. I don't really think I have much of a choice. I think I'm just gonna have to play the iced, and I don't have a choice. The round's too long. It's too scary. I have to do this now. Um, it's a uh, complete overcommitment, but at the same time, I don't do this. This is going to grow and grow and grow out of range that I can deal with them. So I'm going to have to do it. I don't have a choice. Um, this bleed is just too threatening for me. So we'll do that. And opponent's probably just going to play some bad cards now and kind of bleed for free. But not really a whole lot I can do about that for now. I guess I may as well actually play this one first. Um kind of carry over anyway if it doesn't end oh, up doesn't end up getting played so play this now and then gives me the option of clicking this if i want to next turn or whenever um so we're gonna go a card up but at a very expensive cost so let's us go ahead and play this and, and consider it done. then we'll probably end up playing skewed on next turn and I'm still going to keep going here. Interesting. Smuggle. Don't think I want to click this just yet. I don't think I need to click it. Um, Alright. So we go into a short round three. We're up a card. We did spend leader ability. Our opponent has full carry over. Um, uh, this is very expensive playing this ice like that. But at the same time, the bleed was just too threatening had way too many engines developed and was uh, had to just do it pretty much otherwise i might have been in a worse position so we're gonna go ahead and mulligan away the protector mulligan away possibly maybe i keep this it's proactive i need proactive points sure um so we'll start off with the totem i expect our opponent's probably gonna be very uninteractive um for a while. Luckily, I do have proactivity, so that's nice. We see a Neuromancy here coming out onto Jug. Oh, apparently, opponent's actually not going to be 
that uninteractive state. So I guess you play Harold Cripple next, possibly. Oh, it's gonna get both out here. By the looks of things. And then I guess we play this. And we grab this. It's probably gonna end up dying, however. Um, to payday or something. Well, then I guess you can't kill this with payday at least. So, or we might even get Philippa actually. Philippa is not too bad on this either. Um, but it still has Philippa. But it still has Gord. But it still has Siggy too, which is kind of scary. It's like this might end up being a Siggy coming down. That's going to be quite a few points. Um, it actually has a lot of points. We'll play this. Um, Philippa might come down on this greatsword next turn, which is going to be kind of scary. It looks like no Philippa, perhaps, which is kind of good news for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play Bloody Go on that, pulling out a Raider. Their last card from the opponent, probably going to be a Gord, which is quite a few points with eight coins in the bank, too. That is a lot. Oh, it's actually just Philippa. So the opponent didn't draw the Gord, but I think I still lose here, if I'm not mistaken. Um... That is quite a few points, but yeah, it looks like we end up losing. That's mostly because our round, it wasn't so difficult to defend the bleed in round two. We had to play the ice, which is not what we want to do. And um, the bleed was just so threatening in round two there. So let's see what happens now when we go for a shorter round two, perhaps. Okay, so we're going to go this matchup again. However, hopefully this time around, we can contest this round. Um, quite deeply and then go into a shorter round two because a shorter round two would make it a lot harder for our opponent to actually 2-0 us so let's see if we can make this round a lot um going a lot longer the longer this round goes the better for us so looking at our opening hand it's a very bronze heavy hand but the nice amount of very bronze heavy hand is if we can win if we can contest this round deep that can end up being quite nice for us so let's go ahead here and see how long we can make this round go because as mentioned the longer this round goes the better um, so Payday gonna end up killing that, sure. Um, I'd rather the removal come down on these things, so these cards dying, the better than these engines, so it's hopefully our opponent kills these and then these can end up surviving. So our opponent has a lot of crime cards in hand, I believe. Um, okay. I'm gonna get this done now, and then I'm probably gonna end up playing a Protector next. Um, that guy's dipped in the Ponta, that's kind of annoying. Um, don't want to click anything just yet because I need the clicks for this. Um, then I guess I'm just going to go ahead and play you for now. And then next turn we can go Vabion. Uh, Alright, so we can actually play this now if I wanted to. Don't have to go Vabion just yet. I'm gonna do this for now. I'll cleave you in two. And then I try my best to play out this round as long as I can. Um, again, the shorter run two is the harder it is for our opponent to two of us because uh, all the actually the harder it is for our opponent to bleed us in general. Um, let's see here, I guess. Bear Witcher, okay, let's do some math. Bear Witcher is gonna play for 10 points, and then I need to do another 10 points after that, which I think. I think Fabion will allow me to do so. We'll go ahead and play one deeper. Um, yeah, Fabion should be able to get me that the point gap, especially the greatsword and the protector still on the board. So contest this one deeper, and then next turn possibly have to pass, depending how much our opponent ends up committing to this. Um, But yeah, the, the shorter round two, the better for us. Um, I I'm probably going to go Neuromancy. I'm going to end up playing a dip in the Pantar. And I think now I might have to pass. Um, these players aren't going to be giving me too many points. Bloody go right now. It's not really looking that amazing. Yeah, I guess just going to have to pass. Yeah. So we did shorten round two quite a bit, which is nice. Um, we end up playing out all those bronze cards, and now we have a short run too. Hopefully we can find the Hjalmar. Hjalmar will be nice to kill a Cleaver. Um, really hoping we find that Hjalmar. And then, like I said, the shorter the round, the better for us, due to the fact that these engine 
engine cards won't end up playing for that many points for our opponents um, in a shortened round. So this boat is our second one, I think. So it's a mulligan for the raiding fleet. I need to end up finding, hopefully, Hjalmar. I did not find the Hjalmar here, um, which means I'm just going to hold on. To, I guess ice is going to be my way to just um, get, the, get those points back. So I guess in this circumstance, I'm probably going to go for line of play where I just play some bad cards and then I swap to my reach. I don't really have much option there without the Hjalmar. So yeah, we'll have to do that. I'll play this for now and then we'll keep iced as our reach. War of Clans can grab me, I guess, a Brokvar Hunter, I suppose. Um, Philippa now, interesting. Interesting. Um, guess I'll do this. That sets up my Bloodburst 2 for for Ice, which is nice. Um, also gives me Blood Eagle activated, which is quite good. Here comes Kiva. Now I can actually kill more this. I can go Babion into Hjalmar, which is nice. Um, oh, opponent doesn't boost. Okay. So guess we'll kill this then, I suppose. Um, although opponent has played around that a little bit, actually. So... In that case, we'll do this. Um, grab the oh, Bear Witcher, uh, hit that down to get our Ice slash Vabion active again. And let's see what our opponent wants to do here. Also get a nice heal value here, which is also pretty good. And this bleeds a lot harder for our opponent to do because it's the round's much shorter. See just coming out here, but it's not going to be that big because, again, there's like... <laughs> It's so, so much a shorter round, it's so much harder for our opponent, yeah. So let's go ahead and then, I guess, play the Vabion. Um, pull out this. Kill that off. Grab a Hjalmar. Um, I've taken the 10 damage on that. And then take the heal value here, I think. And still keep our Bloodburst 2 for that, which is quite nice. Um... Oh, opponent's gonna really push quite hard here. That's gonna be a lot of points actually. So this is gonna force up my ice, but I'll get to go card. So we, our opponents have a lot of points, but this obviously gonna be a massive point swing coming down here with obviously the ability too. So we go card up. Opponent did spend quite a bit. Um, we spent the ability. They did as well. So we're card up on. We still have out the cripple. Um, obviously our opponent still has quite. Uh, not quite Kim, but rather Jacques and Gord, which is a lot of points. But if we top deck into our good cards here, I think we should be okay. So, let's see. Blood Eagle. Um, Hell the Cripple's great. I don't need the Gutting Slash, I think. Also don't need this. We didn't find the Totem, unfortunately. That's a little bit unfortunate. We also didn't find Skilled. I hope we can get the Skilled Blood Eagle, but we'll start off, I guess, with... Um, I guess just this. This way we can threaten a potential death blow on something if we need to. Um, would have really liked to draw the totem here, but hopefully this is good enough. Um, no totem though is a little bit unfortunate. So it looks like our opponent is going to end up being... Pulling out the Furco here. Furco is quite nice because it gives me a easy death blow. Um, I guess I'm just going to play this and do nothing for now. I don't want to damage that because my Blood Eagle target. So I don't want to obviously end up damaging this. Um, Bloody good fun is kind of annoying. Opponent's last card is Gord. I guess we just beat Gord anyway. What are we going to Blood Eagle though? We Blood Eagle art oh, protect it. Mm. Yeah, we'd be just beat Gord if I do this. It's actually the most points. Yeah, I will not bend my neck for that cripple. And then last play Gord. So we could just deal with that with the Marauder. It would have been a lot better if we had obviously our um our totem, but that is I guess gonna be good enough there. And as you can see in round two it was a lot harder for our opponent to put that much pressure on us. 
even though they did put quite a bit of pressure it was just not as threatening in such a shorter round two than it would have been in a 10 card or nine card or whatever round two instead okay so there is one other manner in which um round control can be attained um and well round control but rather round length and that is through a manner of play called well known as temper passing and what does temper passing exactly mean well it essentially means um when you find yourself in a position where you pass early on the key to when you're enough points ahead where it forced your opponent to go multiple cards down which allows you to almost guarantee that your opponent can't bleed you because if you go multiple cards down in round one you can't really bleed round two and some decks really do have to bleed now if you can pass in a position where your opponent has to go two or three cards down round number one and your opponent is unable to bleed you in round two and your deck is just favoring along round three that's really good for you so in this example our opponent is going to attempt to do that our opponent's going to end up playing very high tempo trying to get himself to force a pass and then um perhaps achieving a longer round um three which would be quite beneficial for our opponent not so beneficial for us so we'll play this for now and get our carry of established unfortunately around one hand's a little bit weak um not the most amazing hand i've ever seen we see a payday coming out here killing the keldar and our opponent's up a lot of points so i'm gonna go ahead and possibly just play this for now and yeah our opponent's up a lot of points if our opponent were to pass right now it'll be incredibly difficult for me to take the points and there we go we see the pass coming out so now we are going to have to go multiple cards down if we want to end up um if we want to end up winning this round which obviously we do want to win this round we can't pass here so um at this point we may as well end up i guess playing this and then playing the base of me as well get the carry over before round three so we're gonna go multiple cards down at this point we may as well just commit to the base of me get the carry over and we are in a long round three then we can't bleed with three cards down or two cards down for that matter so we're going to go into a long round three against syndicate which is not what this deck wants this deck wants to bleed round to it wants to have round control wants to be in control of the game it does not want to go into long round three against syndicate which we're unfortunately going to have to because our opponent played very high tempo passed on us and forced us in a position where we had to go multiple cards down to win round one now again we're not going to be a card down round three we're going to in round three we're going to have equal cards to our opponent but um, due to the fact that we're multiple cards down, we have no choice but to pass here to recover our card um, deficit. Um, which, again, is going to mean long round in a matchup that we really don't want a long round against. And our opponent also free to just play some carry over here, get the boat out. And we still have a couple of cards in fine. There's Quenstone, there's obviously a Cess, which I'd like to draw. Um, so let's see if we can end up drawing into those cards. So... Let us take a look and see what the mulligans show us. Sure, trio. Don't want two of those, that's for sure. Um, suppose I could actually just mulligan this one and play, select the mutation and draw the Quinn. Um, all right, so we can put the Quinn in hand. Unfortunately, though, that does mean we miss out on the unstairs. But other than that, the hand isn't too bad. But we're in a long round three against um against Syndicate, which is not ideal. There's so security. That's gonna probably come down with a tribute, and that's already a lot of points potentially in this round. So I'm gonna start off with this for now. And I'm assuming it's probably gonna get answered quite easily. Um we're also gonna see Cleaver coming out probably soon. Bloody good fun. Okay, I guess kill that. Sure. And let's play the Griffin Witcher for now. Then we can play a Slick Mutation, put the Quen in hand. Or that Witcher tree at some point. And here comes the cleaver. So I've got the salt out to lock this. Do not want this cleaver on the board. That is a lot of points if I don't deal with it. So let's go ahead and lock that right now. Um, that cannot be allowed to survive. But we have to take this. I'm going to need to lock that immediately. And then I can play the second mutation next. Put the Quinn in hand and see what we do from there onwards. So here comes Jacques. Okay. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can potentially get. I need to keep this boarding oil for the drill. Um. I guess sitting back that. Um, if I'm lucky, I will be able to maybe get the Anseus with the with the griffin which are mental i think he is going to be quite a decent amount of points here um 
always going on about this mark, fella? I guess actually to play this early, the adrenaline's a bit awkward here. Adrenaline's actually very, very awkward here. So I guess I'm actually going to play this early. Alright, so unfortunately no one says we do find a one point better sightman, so this is played for still an okay amount of points, I guess. Um, but I need the boarding all for the drill. Drill is going to be too threatening to let through. So we'll do that and then possibly next turn go for the um, Quen onto Witcher Trio. Can't play the Keldo early because of Philippa. If I play Keldo early, my opponent could Philippa it and then they'll have a Keldo, which I won't, which is going to be obviously terrible for me. So I won't be able to do that just yet. So for now, let's do this. Um, end up grabbing a Witcher Trio here. I'm in no mood to talk. And I might just go for the leader ability now. Okay. So we have ourselves a pretty big lead, but with Drill still, Philippa and um, Gord, our opponent still has a lot of points left. Um, here comes the Drill. We have the boarding off that, luckily. And obviously our, some of our witches are going to be dying here. But it's going to be probably spending all the leader charges with this. That is a lot of points. Obviously Drill is a huge card. Um, okay. So have to kill a body oil and then... Still can't play the Skelda right now because of Philippa, although our opponent has no coins in the bank, so actually maybe I could play the Kelda. Actually, yeah, no Philippa in the bank means Skelda actually can come down now, which is nice. Um, so I get the Kelda down now, and this is... This is going to be a couple of points, but again, our opponent has a decent point gap, and we're still having Gord, and... Apparently, maybe not Philippa, at least. That could be kind of nice if there's no Philippa. Um... No, Philippa would be pretty good for me. Play the big Leo, but it's still it's a big point gap. Um, I think we're losing to a Gord here. That's going to be a Neuromancer. So you're going to be grabbing a pretty big Gord, 14 point Gord. And while the Scytheman is nice, it's not quite enough. Um, and that's the thing a long round like this is just not ideal. So I probably missed Philippa, we missed Unsayas. Um, lost by 9 points, which isn't even that close. Again, um, the tempo pass in round one basically meant we couldn't bleed round two and not be able to bleed round two means you're forced into this long round three where I just don't have really much way to win a long round like this in this matchup. So that's where tempo pass can sometimes be quite valuable for you. Anyway, that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thanks again for watching. Again, like I said, this is going to be something that you have to try figure out on your own terms of in terms of what matchups this video at some point, it will become outdated, maybe a year's time from now. Obviously, the matchups will look completely different than this. So important not to focus on the matchups, but more to focus on the concept of, you know, understanding what decks have preferred longer round twos or longer round threes and how you can best um, control those round lengths in a position that's more favorable for you. Because some decks obviously want longer rounds, shorter rounds. Some decks play for more tempo. Some decks have more engines. They need time to set up. Therefore, they need longer round lengths and so on and so forth. Anyway, if you guys learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions regarding this um, topic. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Anyway, take care, everyone, and bye-bye.